I wanted to find out about the uh, the development of your sound. Could you could you tell us a little bit about the history of that? Uh, well, you know, I tell my students they have to be responsible for what sound they get. Whatever sound that they find that they find it identifies them. They got to make that sound come out of the bass the moment it comes out of their case, whether it's Monday or Friday or eight a.m. or eight p.m. And I've kind of stuck with that idea from my from my looking for what I want to sound like. Uh, as, as do most young bass players, I went to a set of strings at the time. And then it was a lot cheaper, of course, you know. And, and uh, I, went, I would go to repair them to find out how does the bass work? How does it make a sound? What does the vibration start? When, you hit a, when I hit a string, what makes that work? And he would explain to me the sound post, the bass bar, what kind of strings you have, how hard you're playing the bass, uh, if the bass has any openings in the seam, all that kind of stuff. So he gave me the first real lesson on what makes the bass do what it's supposed to be able to do. And having understood that, uh, I kind of had my own laboratory in my head and decided that if these are the factors that make the bass do what I think it can do, what will it take to make that happen? So I went through several brands of strings, several types, several weights, several diameters, uh, several different compositions of strings, and finally decided that this sound that I finally identified as something that I wanted to call mine. Uh, it's at this particular set of strings. And uh, over the years, as that set of strings no longer became available, a friend of mine from Hungary who was no longer with us, Attila Zola, came by once and said he was going to uh, work on some strings. Would I help him? I said, well, I'm looking right now. So, yes. So we spent a year making these strings I currently use which are Labella 1700s, 1710s. Okay. They're a nylon wall with a steel core and a silk wrap. And they sound really nice on any bass I have them on. So the, um, the, uh, the, the, the combination of nylon and steel core, it's a little bit of a hybrid for you then. It's a well, little mellow I, I, and a little tight? Yeah, well, I've been doing this, this, this particular combination for probably 25 years. Okay. You know, and I'm always experimenting. I've, I've tried different models of different brands, and someone's always making something new. My job is to see if it works. And so far, where they're really good, they still don't match what I can do with this. I like that. And most strings don't give me that ping of a harmonic. Gotcha, gotcha. And then where does amplification come into play? At what point in your career did you start with it? Well, I've always wanted to be able to be heard. That's kind of bass players hang up. I want to hear me, man. I want to hear right. me. And, and uh, someone recommended this guy out in Brooklyn named Nick. I said, Nick who, man? Who's, who's, who guy, who, who's named Nick anymore these days? It's always Pat and Jerry. I mean, this person, Nick Epifani, who called me one day and said he was putting together some gear and would I like to try it out? I said, well, you know, I'm really kind of busy right now, and I was at the time, you know. And he said, well, let's make an appointment and come by, come by my office, my factory, and, and uh, try, out what, try out what I have in stock. And it turned out to be something like this. This is a newer generation of what I now use. And I found that of all those I've tried out, and I'm on the road a lot, and I can't always take my gear. So I'm always trying out something new because that's the situation I'm in. This is the best I've ever played. It makes the bass sound like me. And... Uh, I try to encourage guys to take a listen to this stuff on their own. Mm. You know, they complain about the pickup sound that they have and, and the, the, the unwarmth of the sound. They say, well, you have to call Nick and, and see if he can set you up like he did me and hear the bass sound just like you're supposed to sound. Is it possible to put your finger on what aspect pleases you when, you, when, you know, when the sound comes out of that speaker? When I do this, with this off, I hear that, and that's important that it doesn't color the sound, it doesn't make the sound sound like somebody else playing my bass, and I hate that kind of thing, you know. When I, when I hit this note, Nick's is 45% responsible, mm. and my hands are the rest, but that's important for me. We need, I need this, and I'm lost without it. I've seen uh, pictures of you in video where you put, you'll put your Epiphany cab on a, on a pole. Yes. What was the origin of that? 
Well, I've always wanted to hear what was going on, mm -hmm. and, and I've always felt that, uh, contrary to f to f to a normal amp placement, I mean, unless I have a, a, a ears at my ankles and you want to have my socks look great with the speaker, it does nothing for me. Right. And I want this up away from the drums physically, and away from the back of the bass or the drummer's bass drum. Mm -hmm. and I found that by putting it on this pole, which is about ear height for me, under 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 two meters, about 1.7, mm. 1.97 meters. Uh, I hear exactly what's going on. My overriding concern is the guy sitting way over that bar at row 27 double Z, way back there. He must hear what I'm doing because that's what he came to do. And this location of this speaker allows him to hear exactly what I'm doing if he's sitting to me as close as you are. Gotcha. And um, I've seen you with 10s and I've seen you with 12s. Is there a preference? Well, you know, I'm doing when I do a, a duo gig in a smaller room. I don't need that kind of power with a 12. And gotcha. a 10 is, is it, it's articulate, it's clean, it represents the same kind of sound as I get from this way here. It's just a smaller sound for a smaller room. It has power, mm. you know, and power starts with here. Mm. But those rooms, I, I don't need to play loud in terms of, of loud. Mm. I just want the bass to have a presence. And the 10 and 12 give me exactly that. Understood.